everything that we have in our life is a stewardship. We're managers of it. And primarily in the church, we talk about stewardship in terms of money. Seems like we talk about that when stewardship comes up, it's about how we manage the, re, the resources that God has put into our lives. And that's true. But we're stewards of a lot of things. So we're stewards of our time. We're managers of that. We'll give an account for what we do with our time. We'll give an account to the Lord for what we do with our money. We'll give an account to the Lord for what we've done with the talents and the giftings that he's put on the inside of us. And I believe that we're also called to be stewards of our vote. And let me tell you why. Because the idea that people could be governed of the people, by the people, for the people, is a relatively new experiment. 250 years. America, uh, prime, the primary constitutional republic. We're not a democracy, so when people say we're, you know, we're a democracy, America is not primarily, primarily a democracy. We're democratic in that people vote, but we're a constitutional republic. And that's different. And if you took civics in high school, you know that. You, you understand the distinction and why they did it that way. But we do have a responsibility because the idea that we can be involved in our self-governing and the forming of our culture, the forming of our values, the forming of our laws and, our, and, and how our country is governed, the fact that we have a say in that is a responsibility. And so because of that, I believe that as Christians, all citizens have that responsibility, but as Christians, we have a double responsibility to that. Number one, because we know that we're gonna give an account for that, and number two, because as Christians, the second great commandment beyond love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength is to love your neighbor as yourself. And one of the ways that we love our neighbors, whether they be Christian, Muslim, secular, atheist, Republican Democrats, is that we should be engaged in any way that we can to form a culture in a society in which every individual can flourish and prosper, not according to our preferences, but according to the common grace that God has put, common God's law that is written in the human hearts. And there are just certain things that when we honor them, society and humans flourish, and when we dishonor those, society degenerates. And so as Christians who believe that, we need to be involved in the political arena because we love people and we want to create the best environment for them to operate and to flourish and to build their families. And that doesn't mean that we're going to force and coerce every individual to be a Christian. No, if you're a Muslim, you ought to be able to live in the United States of America and flourish. If you are a atheist or a humanist, you ought to be able to flourish. If you are a Christian, you should be able to flourish. But make no mistake about it, the, the Judeo-Christian values that are the foundation stones of our nation are the reason why we have flourished and other nations have not. It's interesting to me, Richard Dawkins, who's a famous atheist out of England, self-identifies as a cultural Christian. About two months ago, he said that, I, I am a cultural Christian. Even though I don't believe in God, even though I don't believe in the validity of the Bible or the existence of Jesus Christ, I embrace Christianity as a cultural foundation. And the reason for that is he's, he's lived in the UK, which is in a much similar way, a Christian, Judeo-Christian uh, underpinnings. He said that because the way that the Judeo-Christian belief system has formed our society is the best way, it's the best way to form a government because it recognizes human rights, it recognizes women's rights, it, rec it recognizes the value of every individual and it, and it has beauty and it has elegance and it has purpose and meaning to it. And so because of that, that's how we love our neighbors. So I believe every Christian should vote uh, I think to not vote is actually to vote. Uh, and when it comes to third party, we have to recognize we're really a two-party system. I mean, there are third parties, fourth parties, fifth parties, but they get very little of the vote uh, until that changes. I don't think that it's worth our time. The other problem is if you were to somehow get a third party candidate who wins, you can't really legislate unless you have the House and the Senate uh, with you, and so it's a waste of time. 
Uh, and so I think we are in a position where we're in a two-party, a bilateral party system. It's the best system. It's not a perfect system, but it's the best system that we have. And we have no right to complain about the world we live in if we abdicate our responsibility and stewardship to vote. So I'm calling on every Christian who's a voting age that you need to exercise that right. And then if you win, great. If you don't win, then you need to do what you've always done, which is love Jesus, love people, pray like it matters, pray like Jesus is king, that he's on the throne, recognizes, recognizing that human government is flawed and it's temporal, but Jesus is perfect, his kingdom lasts forever.